Whenever I meet a high school student that's telling me that they're going through a sacraments class or they learned about the Eucharist in a sacrament class, I always ask them a question. I ask them, I say, okay, the Eucharist is the what? The Eucharist is the blank and blank of the Christian life. What are the words that should be filled in that spot? And all they do is look at me usually with a blank face. Now, they probably know the answer, but seriously, he puts them into a pop quiz like that, and it's a priest asking, all of a sudden they freeze up. So then they go, Father, can I get a clue? And I go, not a problem. Here we go. The Eucharist is, and I say, it begins with an S, and begins with an S of the Christian life. So you see them contemplate, and they go, okay, I got it. Oh, great, what is it? They go, the Eucharist is a soup and salad of the Christian life. I go, no, no not exactly at all. Now, they've never actually said that before, but then they say, give me another hint, and this is where, you know, I had to show off that I was in school for eight years, so I had to show off a little bit of my knowledge and say, fine. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1324. Once again, you get that blank face. I said, fine, not a problem. Lumen Gentium, number 11. They don't say the words, but they do different words. I say, and that one, they say the Eucharist is the fount and apex of the Christian life. So I said, just put in the S words for that. And now they really get frustrated. And now I'm really prideful because I'm like, hey, look at me. I know the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Congratulations. So finally, I say, okay, do you want the answer? And by this time, they go, yeah, we kind of do. And so I say, all right, the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. We all knew that, though, of course, right? We've heard this before. Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1324, the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. So now I want to ask you that question a couple months from now on the golf course or something like that. You will have the response, or oh, you'll say soup and salad, which works for me as well because it means you're paying attention to the homily. All right. But the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. So we know that, but what does it mean? Who cares, right? Well, we should care because it means everything. What does it mean for the Eucharist to be the source of the Christian life? By the way, what this means for us automatically says, well, we're Christians, most of us here. I know there's some that are not, and that's good. You're here. But as Christians, the Eucharist is the source of your life. Think about that. But what does that mean? The Eucharist being the source of your life. Or we could say the font of your life. Just by thinking a little bit of a river, we say, where is the source of the river? Where is the beginning of the river? You know, the Mississippi, it's up north, these other rivers and stuff like this. We say, this is where the source is. Or this is a source of our problems. It's flooding, right? But for the Eucharist, we know it's not a source of problem. We know it's our source of our life. The Eucharist is the source of our life. The Eucharist is what gives us life. Of course, we have foreshadowing of this in the Old Testament we hear in our first reading today with the Israelites in the exile from Egypt to Israel those 40 years. And what are they doing? But they are eating manna from God, food from heaven, this bread that truly gives them substance, gives them life. And we know for us as well that we are able to receive the Eucharist, not bread but truly the body and blood of Christ. And this is what gives us life. Why? Because the Eucharist is Jesus Christ. And we hear whoever eats of him, whoever gnaws on his flesh would be the literal translation of this passage from John 6, 51 to 58. Whoever gnaws on him will live forever. The Eucharist gives us this life. How beautiful. Of course, we know it's not only the source of the Christian life, not only the source of our life, but we also know that Eucharist is the summit of our life, the apex of our life. And what is this? Not the summit of Mount Everest, but higher up than that. The Eucharist is what we attain towards. The Eucharist is everything. And we should strive to be in union with Jesus Christ. We strive in union with God. And through the Eucharist, receiving truly the body and blood of Christ, once again, we are able to have life eternally. Unlike in John 6, 51 and 58, where Jesus says, those who ate the manna in the desert still died, those who eat of me, truly my flesh, will live forever. And so today we are here at Mass, and we are able to come forward and hear the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. We're not hearing the symbol of the body of Christ. We're not hearing, here's a symbol of the blood of Christ. No, right now on that table, 
there is bread and wine right there. But when it comes to this altar and the consecration and this unbloody sacrifice here on the altar, it becomes the body and blood of Christ, Jesus Christ. This is why when we come into church, what do we do? Because our tabernacle is over here in the Adoration Chapel. Okay. But seeing as how it's not here in the sanctuary, when we come forward, what do you do? You bow towards what? You don't bow towards the cross. You don't bow towards me. You bow towards the altar. Why? Because this is where that unbloodied sacrifice happens. This is where the bread and wine truly become the body and blood of Christ. And we come forward and we hear this and we receive it. And then what are we able to do? We are able to share in Christ's divinity. Think about this. When you come forward and you say amen, when we say amen and we receive Jesus Christ, God is in you. How amazing. How amazing is this? It's almost unfathomable to think of. We know it's a hard thing to believe. We know we can see this even in the beginning. John 6 a little bit later in the passage of 60 to 68, we hear that some of his followers who have been him with a couple years now go to Jesus and say, this saying is hard to accept. Who can accept it? And Jesus says, not everyone can. And his followers, some of them, left. We know the Reformation in the 1500s, all of a sudden, some theologians, some priests saying, it's not the body of Christ, it's not the blood of Christ, it's only a symbol. And look at this separation that happened in the Christian church. Yet here we are today, coming forward, and truly as a central belief of the Catholic faith, saying, this is the body, this is the blood of Christ. I don't know about you, but for me, back, 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 back in the day, like 12, 13 years ago when I was in college my freshman year, and I missed Mass a couple times, when I missed Mass, my week was horrible. I wasn't living a Christian life. I wasn't living a life that was glorifying God. And the next week I'd come back, hopefully going to confession ahead of time, and I'd go to Mass, and I'd receive the Eucharist. And also I knew that week was going to be better. And the reason why was because Jesus Christ truly was with me, that I had received him in the Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our life. But the Eucharist, in all essence, is everything to our life. It's everything. Jesus gives us everything. He gives us life, and he helps us reach that eternal life that we are striving for. Today, my brothers and sisters, on the solemnity of Corpus Christi, let us have that renewed reverence for Jesus Christ, truly present in the Eucharist. And let us come forward every single Sunday, every single week, and come and hear these words, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, and respond, amen and to respond by simply saying, I believe.